Gary Parrish was with that crew on the sideline. You read him at CBSSports.com. See him on the CBS Sports Network and CBS. He is with us now on the Johnston RV Center Hotline. Welcome in, Gary. Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I appreciate you guys having me. How you been? Uh, We've been awesome, man. We thank you for coming on with us. Um, We'll get to Auburn being number one in one second. I do want to ask, though, (laughs) what? We just said it. I know, I know. We'll get to it in one second. You go to the Cameron Indoors of the world and the Allen Field Houses of the world. Auburn Arena has become a really difficult spot to play. How does it measure up nationally from all the great places you go? As good as it gets. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have the longevity of Cameron Indoor or Allen Fieldhouse. If I were ranking um, bucket list places to go see a college basketball game, I would probably start with those two. I mean, they, they really do live up to expectations. Like, when you walk into Cameron, it's a, it, it's a wild experience. And, and same thing with Allen Fieldhouse. It's just got a, a really unique feel to it that um, is unmatched. But, you know, fast forward to the present. You know, um, say noon central uh, this past Saturday, and you just stand at midcourt and do a circle and look around and, and try to take it all in. You, you can't get better than what Auburn Arena was. Um, you know, I, like you said, I, I've been at this point to all of them. You know, Cameron, Allen Fieldhouse, Assembly Hall, the Kennel. Um, well, you know, what I experienced on Saturday was as good as it gets. Um, you know, um, I, I've been doing this long enough. To where you, you do lose a little bit, you become a, a, a numb to it a, a bit. Like, okay, uh, another Duke Carolina game, That's fine, I'll do it. You know, it it, it it sort of loses a little bit of it. But I, I can tell you, and I, I mean this sincerely, um, when I was there on Saturday, I, I felt lucky to be there. It was one of those moments that reminded me, um, wow, I can't believe I get paid to do this. Hey, and you've been doing it long enough, too, where you can look at a true freshman and you can tell how their game can translate to the next level in the NBA. And Jabari Smith, one of these guys at 6'10", um, a 3 and D kind of guy that can – I don't know a weakness, Gary. I mean, what is the ceiling for Jabari Smith in the next three, four, five years? Uh, there's no ceiling. I mean, he could be the number one pick in the draft and could be um, you know, one of the best players in the NBA. Um, he checks uh, – I don't want to say every box, but certainly a lot of them. Um, you know uh, – On Saturday, that was the first time I stood next to him since he was, you know, participating at the grassroots level. Sometimes you get next to somebody and they're bigger than you think. They're not as big as you think. You know, TV doesn't always translate perfectly. I say all that to say this. You get next to him. He's legit six foot ten. You know, that's not an exaggerated height. Um, He's he's really as long as they say. He, um, you know, obviously um, can, can score at an elite level. Uh, the jump shot at his height is very unique, and you know it, it's a it's a high release point on a six foot ten frame. So he's shooting over basically whoever he wants to shoot over. Um, it's a consistent release point. He understands the difference between a shot and a great shot. He mostly just takes great shots, which is why he's shooting above forty percent from three. Um, I, I think ultimately it'll be a conversation between he and Paulo Bencaro, the freshman at Duke. Um, as it pertains to who's going to be the number one pick in the draft. But um, when you start looking at all of the the things that he brings to the table, including being the son of a professional basketball player, like that is something that NBA general managers truly value these days because of Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Jaron Jackson Jr. on down the line. Um, you know, when you when you can draft somebody who's grown up around it, who who understands what it looks like, what it feels like, what it takes to get to a certain place, um, the things you have to do, the things you have to avoid. Again, I'm just telling you that is something that general managers value, and Jabari obviously checks that box as well. He's a terrific prospect, but not just a prospect. He's a terrific player. And I, I say it that way because it's not always true. Sometimes great college pro- great NBA prospects, at least on paper, they're not good college basketball players. I mean, I live in Memphis. Right now Memphis has got a, a freshman named Amani Bates. He's an interesting prospect. He's not a good player right now. Um, Jabari Smith is a great prospect and a great player. And um, among the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason, Auburn just moved to number one in the AP poll for the first time in school history. Uh, You saw Gary Parrish on the broadcast of Auburn's win over Kentucky on CBS Coast to Coast this past week. He's with us on the JohnsonRVCenter.com hotline. Bruce took a team to the Final Four just a few years ago. We think this team is better. Do you think this team is better than that team? And does this team have the makeup of someone who can win six games in March and be national champions? Yes and yes. 
um, it, 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 it's better um, in the sense that 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 Final Four team was really good, um, but wasn't great defensively. This team is really good defensively. You know, Auburn is top 15 in the country in offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. Um, I, you know, they've got a real rim protector in Walker Kessler. Got a nice blend of of legitimate NBA talent and um, great college basketball players. Like Javari Smith might be the number one pick in the draft. Uh, by the time the season is over, he might not lead Auburn in scoring. Um, he's the only freshman in the rotation. So this isn't a team like Duke or not this year, but in many years, Kentucky, that is overly reliant on first-year players. You can win it with um, a reliance on freshmen. You know, Kentucky did it in 2012. Duke did it in 2015. But what history shows us is that um, a nice mix of legitimate NBA talent and experience is the best recipe for trying to win a national championship. Look at that Baylor team last season. They've got NBA guards, um, but but they were also older, you know, 21, 22, 23-year-olds. Um, Auburn has experience. Auburn has NBA talent. Um, you know, two former five-star prospects in Jamari Smith and Walker Kessler. Katie Johnson is a, is a takeover guard if you want him to be. And sometimes, honestly, even when you don't want him to be, but you like the mindset. <laughs> Uh, uh, Wendell Green's a terrific transfer. Like I'm telling you, you know, Auburn is ranked number one in the country right now because it has the best resume in the country. That doesn't always translate to best team in the country, but I think Auburn checks both of those boxes. This is the best resume in the country, and it's the best resume in the country created by what is, at this point, it seems clear to me, the best team in the country. Gary is on Twitter at Gary Parish CBS at Gary Parish CBS. What about the conference? Um, it, it is being painted like the SEC almost as having a revival in basketball. I don't know that it was down that much, but uh, do you view this among as the best and the conversation of the best conferences in America? Among, uh, probably not the best. There's okay. a lot of computer numbers that suggest the Big 12 is, is the best conference in the country because in the Big 12, there's really no bad team. Um, you know, like. They, they could get eight of their 10 teams. 80% of the league really might make the NCAA tournament. And, you know, even the teams that are perceived to be not as good as the others, so a team like Kansas State, um, you know, they just had Kansas down 17 points um, in the second half over the weekend. You know, at, at, in the Big 12, at, all 10 teams are ranked in the top 55 at, at Kimpom. So there's, there's no bad teams, whereas in the SEC, you do have a Georgia – You do have a Missouri. You do have an Ole Miss. You do have a South Carolina. You do have a Vanderbilt. But I will say the league is undeniably improved and very, very good. And it reminds me of a story I was told secondhand, but still uh, I believe it to be true, many, many years ago um, while Mike Slide was still the late Mike Slide commissioner uh, of the SEC. They were launching the SEC network, and one of the points he made to the athletic directors and the school presidents, I'm told, is that, this network is going to make you more money than you know what to do with. Um, our, our football is obviously the biggest priority, but, and I'm paraphrasing here, but, but the most inventory we're going to have for our channel, our network, is going to be men's basketball inventory. There's more men's basketball games that we're going to put on that channel than literally anything else. We need them to be quality. So if you've got the right coach, pay him to stay. If you've got the right facility, awesome spend money to upgrade them, keep them where they're at. If you don't have the right coach, buy your your wrong coach out and hire the right coach. Spend what you have to spend on facilities, recruiting, travel, coaching, staff, everything, and and truly invest in the sport. And you've seen that happen all over the league, whether it's – you know, it used to be that Kentucky operated at a level above everybody else. Um, It still does, I, I guess. But everybody in that league spends now. Auburn spends big money on basketball. Mississippi State spends big money on basketball. Tennessee spends big money on basketball. The league, uh, the universities, from really top to bottom, have invested. And this, what we're watching right now, is the byproduct of that. They beat Gonzaga and Houston in back-to-back games. They lose at Missouri. They're down 14 multiple times at home to Missouri this past week. Um, what do you read into Nate Oates and this Alabama team right now? Uh, obviously, the, the most... Um, all over the place body of work in the country. I mean, they've got massive wins and then losses that make you scratch your head. 
I mean, to um, to uh, lose to, to Missouri, um, it, it, you know, but also have wins over Gonzaga and Houston, it's hard to make sense of. But I do think there's probably an explanation. You know, Nate, who I'm a big fan of, by the way, and as long as he keeps doing really well at Alabama, I don't say this to uh, upset anybody, but like when these big boy jobs open – that are going to open in the next year or two or three, um, you know, uh, Syracuse. I should probably extend the time frame a little bit. You know, one year, two years, three years, eight years. You know, the the Kentucky job opens, the Syracuse job opens. He's going to be on the list for those jobs because he's really well thought of. Um, uh, you know, in 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 the industry, he he he's coaching a modern style of basketball. He's committed to a modern style of basketball. But, but I think that, that, that is the best explanation for why they've been really good in some spots and not so good in others. Uh, broadly speaking, here's the issue. Um, they're going to take, um, you know, somewhere between 46 and 51% of their field goal attempts every game from three-point range. You know, they, they want to launch from the three-point line or layups and dunks. They don't want anything um, inside the arc outside of, you know, three or four feet. And so I love the style of play, and it's the reason they were able to win the SEC outright last season. Um, and, and I thought was probably, outside of Baylor, the biggest challenger to Gonzaga for the national championship. The problem this season is that um, they're still playing fast. They're still playing the same way in terms of shot selection and, and, and how they prioritize field goal attempts. But they don't guard the way they guarded last season. Some of that because Herb Jones is there and they're not shooting the way they shot last season. They are only shooting 31.2% from three point range, which ranks 279th in the country. So I, I guess let me try to simplify it for you. Uh, last year when they um, were making three pointers, they were going to bomb. I mean, they, they, that's why I thought they were one of the few teams that could beat Gonzaga, even when Gonzaga played well or beat Baylor, even when Baylor played well. Because if they're going to throw up 36 threes on you and make 15 of them, you're going to have a hard time winning. Uh, what allowed them to avoid these unusual losses last season is they guarded so well that even when they weren't making shots, they could stay in the game and beat you. Now, they're not making the threes as often as they did. And when they're not making them very well at all, they're not good enough defensively to hang around with you and, and beat you. They're not good enough defensively to still get past you know, bad competition. And, and that's why they're sitting here with the record they have right now. But, um, you know, they won two straight. Uh, things seem to be getting on the right track. And th they're going to remain dangerous regardless because there is some talent in the program. They've got an A-plus coach. And the style of play is, is going to allow them to, to beat, you know, literally anybody when they're playing well. Penny Hardaway's apologized for his rant. I wanted to ask you a bigger question. You and Verno are experts at being able to comment on this. The Grizzlies are so good and entertaining does that make his job harder at Memphis, or does it have no impact at all with that being now really a two-basketball town? Well, I don't think it, it makes his job harder, but it does make um, the challenge of getting people into FedEx Forum for Tiger games um, more, more, more difficult. You know, when the NBA came to Memphis, one of the things they cited was it could be our next San Antonio you know, San Antonio had no other pro sports, so we'll be the only pro sports team in town. What the NBA didn't properly understand is that Tiger basketball is a pro sport. It is treated as such in the city. And that, you know, prevented the Grizzlies from really taking hold, um, particularly when John Calipari was the coach. But you fast forward to the present, and people still care deeply and passionately about the Tigers. Um, and, and are, are, are probably more hurt by their struggles than they would be by Grizzly struggles because, you know, that runs deep. But there's no getting around the fact that um, the Grizzlies are the better product right now. You know, there was a time where I could lay two tickets to a Memphis UAB game or two tickets to a Grizzlies Pacers game on a table and say, hey, take whatever one you want, have fun, and people would pick up Tigers UAB before they'd pick up Grizzlies Pacers. Now, that's not even close to true. Everybody would pick up the Grizzlies um, because of John Morant, because they're legitimately good, because the future is bright. And I can just tell you, as Penny struggles and the Grizzlies continue to, to move in the right direction, in a place where it looks like they'll be competing for 
Western Conference Championship soon, um, there are going to be more and more people who decide my money is better spent on Grizzlies tickets than than uh, than Tigers tickets, and that's obviously problematic for the athletic department. All right, he is Gary Parish at Gary Parish CBS. See him on CBS, CBS Sports Network. Read him at cbssports.com. His poll attacks column is really good each week. Uh, the dude from Kansas City is, I guess, out of it this week. He got in line. So Gary will find somebody else. Uh, Gary, thank you for the time. Great talking with you. We greatly appreciate it. It's always my pleasure. Appreciate hearing from you guys. Take care. All right, buddy. Take care. Gary with us on the johnstonrvcenter.com hotline.